Hey guys, Captain Dylan Hubbard here at Hubbard's Marina with another Sunday night live stream fishing show. That's right, it's Sunday night and it's time for another live stream show. Thanks for tuning in guys. We're going to get started here on Facebook and get the show started very shortly. Hey guys, Captain Dylan Hubbard here at Hubbard's Marina with our Sunday night live stream fishing show. Uh, we've got Will McClure. How you doing, Will? Uh, pretty good, Dave. Pretty good. We got Will in studio tonight. For those of you who don't know Will, Will is our long range expert here at Hubbard's Marina. He, you've been doing these long range trips almost two decades now. <laughs> A long time. <laughs> A long 15 time. Fifteen years. 15 years he's been doing these uh, 39 hour and 44 hour and 63 hour trips. So Will's got a ton of deep water knowledge and uh, more. I mean, you've done everything from freshwater fishing in the rivers and ponds and lakes all the way up in North Carolina and down, huh? Uh, yeah, from North Carolina, South Carolina. I lived in South Carolina, fished there for a while, and now Florida for the last 15 plus years. So a ton of helpful information uh, tonight on the show, we've got, of course, you're stuck with me as always, and then we've got Will in studio tonight too. So we're going to get started here very shortly, uh, just waiting for a few more people to get logged in and making sure everything's up and running for you guys, and then we're going to get started. Make sure to comment uh, where you're watching from, and don't forget to... Uh, Tag your friends, share this video with your favorite face, uh, favorite Facebook group or on your timeline. If you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and uh, don't forget to tell your friends to tune in. Remember guys, if we get up to 400 live viewers, someone is going to win a free 39 hour fishing trip and if we get up to, uh, if we have less than 300 live viewers, 400 live viewers someone's still getting a half price 39 hour trip and uh everybody is gonna have a chance to win a five hour half day for two or a 10 hour all day for two no matter how many people are watching the show so lots of cool stuff you can win and uh hopefully lots of good information that you guys enjoy tonight as well we are gonna start very shortly you still got a second to run and grab yourself a drink uh, Will, do we have our drinks ready? Oh, we're ready to rip here. We're ready to rip. <laughs> All right, so we got our drinks. We are just finishing up, getting ready for the show. It is Sunday night, January 12th at 8.31 p.m. We are going to start very shortly. If you are not watching live, if you're watching this later and not on January 12th at 8.31 p.m., you can skip forward to where you see the video start. If you are watching live, just bear with us a few seconds. We're going to get started very shortly. Remember, help us spread the word and share this video with your timeline, with your favorite fishing club. Uh, call your buddies because you want that chance to win that free 39-hour trip. And in order to do that, we do have to have 400 live viewers between Facebook and YouTube. So hopefully we'll get a chance to give away a free 39-hour trip, but we are still going to give away a free 5-hour half day for two and 10-hour all day for two, regardless of how many people we have watching. So still got plenty of great chances to win free trips. And don't forget, in order to win those free trips, you do have to comment on the Hubbard's Marina Facebook video in order to win those free trips. Again, we are going to get started here very shortly, but I do want to show you guys something while we're waiting. We uh, put together some of our favorite uh, photos from 2019, and uh, we got a few of them here we wanted to share with you guys. A uh, really, really good selection of photos. These, again, are some of our favorite photos from 2019. There was a bunch, a bunch of different nice fish caught. And some bigger fish caught and some other species that are not included. These are just some of my favorite photos. While we're waiting to get started, we're very close. Just waiting on a few more people to get rolling in here. Finishing up our notes. 
We do have some exciting stuff coming up, guys. Don't forget, this Saturday, January 18th, we've got our Bass Pro Shop Seminar at 2 p.m. at the Tampa Bass Pro Shops. Again, that's 2 p.m. January 18th. That's this Saturday. Join us at Bass Pro Shops Champ Tampa uh, for a chance to win free trips and also to talk about fishing. That's from 2 p.m. to 3 p.m. All you have to do is show up for the seminar about 2 o'clock, hang out with me for an hour, and uh, hopefully you'll have some questions that we can help answer. Dang, look at that mangrove. That was a beast. Well, Tony, two pictures in a row. Yeah, Tony, Tony has a lot of good photos in Three here. Three in a row, Tony. <laughs> He's killing it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, come join us uh, this Saturday at Bass Pro Shops Tampa, or join us Sunday night, uh, again, every Sunday night for our live stream show. Just keep in mind, Sunday night, January 26th, uh, that show will not be going on because I'll be on an airplane heading for New Orleans for our uh, National Marine Fisheries Seminar. So January 26th, we will not have the show. But besides that Sunday night, we're going to have the show, as always, every Sunday night, 8.30 p.m. I'm dropping a link into the comments now. That link is to our event for that Bass Pro Shop seminar coming up this Saturday. So hopefully you can join us for Bass Pro Shops this Saturday. We're almost ready to get started. Don't forget to tag your friends. Tell them to tune in. And uh, we're going to get started here very shortly. Right now we are just over... Uh, 330 live viewers so we only got 70 more 300 uh, we're up to 340 now live viewers between Facebook and YouTube so uh, we are very close already to getting enough people to give away those free that free 39 hour trip so make sure you stay tuned because in order to win those free trips you do have to be watching live but you ready, Wilbo? Uh, let's do this. Let's get this show on the road. How you doing, Will? Pretty good, pretty good. Uh-oh, we're going the wrong way. There we go. <laughs> All right, so we are going to get started here tonight, and uh, we're going to talk a little bit about what we've been catching, what's been going on here at Hubbard's Marina, and then we're going to get into what's coming up and talk a little bit about the weather uh, the weather looks great this week. Yeah, the weather looks great this week. That is the one thing in the wintertime. The fish are biting, but you got to work around the weather. And luckily, this week, we don't have to work about work around the weather too much. I think we're going to start off talking about the weather because it's that exciting right now. Uh, if you go to our website, hubbardsmarina.com, and go down to uh, fishing trips, scroll down to weather links on our weather links page, you can find all our helpful links that I use to check the weather for our trips. Uh, I like scrolling down to uh, that 5 or 10 hour forecast area to start out. And we can see here real, real nice, calm week of weather. Not even a green bar in sight. That means calm conditions. Monday's less than two foot most of the day. Uh, Tuesday is less than one and a half, pretty much. Wednesday is one foot. Thursday is one foot or less. Friday, just about one and a half or less. Saturday, one and a half. Sunday, one and a half, two foot. And then it gets a little breezy there coming January 20th. That's way far in advance, so still too far out to tell. But long story short, we have absolutely gorgeous week of weather. Nice little weather break finally right yeah that's the, how it happens you got bad weather for a while and now we're gonna have a little good weather stretch here for a week and Thank take you. advantage <laughs> of it while it's here for sure yeah i mean we've got that 39 hour trip uh tuesday you ready for that one? Oh yeah ready really i haven't been out fishing in a long time yeah it's been since uh december 29th was our last trip yep was that the last one that was so. the last one so we're ready to get back to it for sure and uh we're excited for a great week of weather we've got uh, the 12-hour extremes going out Wednesday. We've got uh, lots of different options. The five-hour trips uh, catching hogfish. 10-hour trips catching a lot of hogfish. few lanes, some mangroves. Definitely a great time to get out in the water. 
But let's get rolling with some photos. Don't go back too much further. You're going to knock that thing over. <laughs> and uh, let's get into some photos and show what we've been catching inshore. And then we're going to move near shore. And uh, we're going to talk a little bit about offshore. Don't have a lot of offshore photos right now. Because as Will said, we haven't been offshore in a while. Yeah, we haven't been out since last year. Yeah. Since a decade since, ago. Since last year. Since yeah. last decade. And what you mean by that is a week ago. <laughs> <laughs> so very mature. <laughs> You've been hanging out with your daughter too much, man. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we should have Madison on the and show. Jason one of the too, yeah. yeah, Jason too. Uh, so here is uh, uh, Joe Simons from Salt Strong showing off a nice flounder. They were out with Captain Tyler Capella on an inshore charter, and uh, they were filming some stuff about flounder. Definitely a pretty good flounder bite right now. Not super hot with the flounder. I mean, you're kind of a flounder whisperer, Will. When you're not offshore on these 39 and 44 hour trips, a lot of times you're around the docks fishing, and uh, I would say you had the flounder dialed in the last couple of years. They yeah, they are very good eating fish. They're one of my favorites. One of your favorites eating fish, really? Mm -hmm. Huh. And uh, what's your favorite time of year for flounder? The the my favorite is like October November, but I imagine they do the same thing in the spring too. Yeah, <clears throat> but my favorite is the fall, but I'm sure they run through the passes in the spring yeah. as well, and even winter time. Yeah, they're they're here pretty much all winter, is what I've been told. But the very beginner, very beginning, uh, October November, and then towards the tail end, February March April, is kind of the best, is what I've been hearing. But uh, you like that first part of that winter time, that late fall, huh? Yeah, that's been my best times around uh, the passes, at least. Maybe they go in the, you know, but right around yeah. John's Pass, there is the best is I October, you. November. Favorite approach? Uh, easy, just a jig head with a uh, uh, root beer. Root beer shrimp? Uh, no, a root beer uh, DOA. Fluke. Oh, yeah. yeah. Paddle tail. Yeah, I love the DOA cow paddle tails. They work really well. Mm -hmm. Or the DOA shrimp is kind of my favorite. Yeah. Uh, you can get them on a lot of things. Yeah. Just golf. basically the goal is bouncing it along the bottom, right? Yeah, slow jig it across the bottom. Slow, because they're right on the bottom. Go ahead. That one looks like he got it on a spoon almost. Uh, I think he's holding it on a, a soft plastic. Uh, right? Oh, that is a That's soft plastic. A, it's a You're soft plastic. Right. So, yeah, he got that a, on a jig head. Yeah, it's a paddle tail. They have this... They uh, Salt Strong invented this color. It's called Slam Shady. It's uh, yeah. it's white with a little bit of gold flake. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So Slam Shady is the custom Salt Strong color, and it's a unique paddle tail. It's supposed to be extra strong, so it won't rip from the puffer fish and pins. And flounders will rip them up too. Yeah. It? So they're they're they've been heavy testing that bait and uh, doing doing really hmm. well catching a lot of fish. Yeah, the Slam Shady. Mm -hmm. Got to get it on their website, saltstrong.com. Shameless plug you just set me up for. <laughs> Appreciate that. <laughs> Didn't even know it. He walked into that one. Yeah. I did. <laughs> Let's see if I can get this picture to change. All right. We're going to have to go back. Let's just leave him up for the show. <laughs> just stick to that flounder photo, baby. <laughs> there we go. We got the photos changing again. <laughs> there is some redfish action going on, too, besides uh, the occasional flounder bite. The redfish are pretty good especially up in the back bay waters. This is right along a kind of rocky, uh, almost oyster bar-ish seawall area back in the back protected bay waters up in one of the bayous. Definitely a great area to target those flounder right now this time of year. So uh, great opportunity to catch those flounder uh, back up there in the back protect or uh, those redfish back up there in the back protected way bay waters. Will, right now we have, what's 194 plus 362? That's a oh, lot. Yeah. 140, so that's easily 500 live viewers right now between Facebook and YouTube. So, so you guys hold tight. Some, someone's winning a free 39-hour trip. All you have to do is hang on. You do have to be watching live in order to win those free trips. We just shattered records. Just shattered it. Nice. <laughs> Uh, so uh, another nice photo here of some snook. We're working our way through these inshore photos. Then we're going to get near shore, talk a little bit about near shore. But the snook fishing has been pretty good, especially uh, surprisingly, there's still some snook around the passes. Uh, this is kind of up to our north, but it's still around the mouth of a pass. Uh, they've been catching some of these snook in the passes 
uh, even at night and early morning. Now, this time of year, generally, the snook kind of disappear. That will happen, and I've been there recently. I've been to the, uh, the Hubbard's at late night hours working, and there are snook around there this yeah. time of year, and I guess the water has... Has not, we haven't really had a big freeze. Yeah, know? the water's maintained, so the snook are still in the passes right now for whatever reason. So, they're definitely not as many as there were, was. Like no, in summertime, it's, not like, yeah. it's not like when Dylan was taking videos in the summertime, but there's a few decent <laughs> snooks out there. I don't break out a video when I'm fishing, I don't break out a live video when I'm fishing unless it's really good. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, definitely a little bit fewer and further between. But they're still out there in the passes for sure. More of them up in the back protected bay water areas for sure around the mouths of the rivers, the bayous. That's where a lot of those snook are hiding, especially when it cools off. But uh, we had a really nice little warm patch and we're going to have a nice warm patch this week. It's going to be record highs. It's going to be a nice mid. Yeah, I, haven't, I saw good weather, so I didn't even look. Yeah. yeah. Let's, let's double check on that. I, th I think it's going to be in the mid 80s this week. So that warm weather pattern will definitely excite those snook and redfish and pretty much. Inshore, everything inshore. Yeah. Sheep's head. It'll get them everything kind of turned on. Those sheep's head like the cooler weather. Uh, but when you have these little weather changes, these little weather patterns, it gets things moving, gets things excited for sure. Bay News 9 changed their. their there uh, it is. Where are we at? Come on. There it Tomorrow's is. Tomorrow's seven there day. It is. Seven day. All right, seven day forecast. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Man, I love Florida. This is what you call winter time in Florida. I mean, absolutely gorgeous conditions all the way through the week. Uh, Eighty-two Monday, eighty high seventies the rest of the week. So absolutely gorgeous conditions. That's gonna get the fish chewing yeah we had a windy christmas and christmas week new year week and yeah now we're in it now we're in it and enjoying it for sure uh so it's going to definitely be a great week i think that's going to kind of help us offshore too on that 39 hour yeah trip. those what fish wait they they like it when it gets calm out there this time of year summertime it's been calm for weeks so they like a little rough weather but this time of year it's almost the opposite where it's been rough out there for weeks now it's calm yeah and it's and they're gonna get more excited. You think? I think so. It's in. We're fishing a different area this time of year. We're gonna quit targeting the gags as much and slide out there deeper and fish for snappers and big vermilions, big red groupers. Excited about that one for mm -hmm. sure. Gonna Pelagic. be a great trip. All right, let's see here. Let's get back into inshore. We're getting ahead of ourselves yeah, already. Yeah. All right, where were we at? Some snook. snook. All right, let's get this photo big again. And uh, some more snook. Definitely a lot of snook. And what we were, got off track with talking about was the weather. That warm weather pattern is going to bring those fish back into the passes. Probably biting even a little better. The trout bite has been on fire inshore. Pretty much anywhere you go, any time of day. At night, they're mostly around those dock lights and those bridge lights, the bridge light lines. I used to fish them on the bridge lights. Yeah, the bridge lights. They're thick under John's Pass. Are they? Yeah, yeah. I haven't fished them there. I used to fish them in John's Pass, but they, it's changed in there since they built the new bridge. But I, uh, but I used to catch a lot of trout in John's Pass. Yeah, the, uh, the really either the north or south side has a lot of trout. But I, what I've been, what I've seen, and what I've heard is best is that west side of the bridge on an outbound tide, especially the start of the outbound tide, that bait gets pushed out of the pass, and those trout are hanging right in that light line. They like the light. Yeah, yeah. And they like ambushing that bait as it's getting flushed out. So, and that lure is similar to the lure he called that flounder on the other guy. Yep, soft paddle tail. The yeah. soft plastic paddle tails, definitely the hot bait right now uh inshore plenty of snook these are uh two of around 60 snook uh that captain andy caught uh wicked salty charters you can see his hat there uh they had an inshore fishing charter and this is along the northwest side of tampa bay uh they caught about 60 snook in uh the the schooly size range they caught a few big ones but uh, tons of fish for sure, and uh, they are schooled up there in the back protected bay waters for sure. So great time of year to get out there, catch some snook uh, in the back back bays along the shorelines in the shallows. Some red fish around there too. Residential docks, great time of year to target those residential docks. 
flounder around the structure, adjacent to the structure on those sandy bottom areas. I would say I, I do best with flounder like or next to a dock or next to a bridge. They seem to or hide. Or next to a flat. Next to or a flat. Or next to like a grassy area. Yeah, Basically yeah. anything that's going to hold bait, right? Mm-hmm. They like to be beside of something. No, beside <laughs> of something. They like to be cuddled up next to it? <laughs> yeah. I got gotcha, you. I got gotcha. you. <laughs> All right. So the flounder are definitely biting well to, or definitely biting pretty good. I wouldn't say super well. Uh, the best bite this past week in shore was definitely on the redfish and then followed by the trout, followed by the snook, followed by sheep said probably <laughs> up there somewhere too. Biting good. Everybody so. was biting this week. Everybody was biting. Inshore fish. I was ranking them, dude. I wasn't saying they're all biting good. <laughs> Uh, maybe I'm confusing. <laughs> All right, let's get in sh- or uh, near shore, and uh, we're working our way out a little deeper here. Great quality on that. I know, beautiful photo. Definitely some hogfish action. I mean, the hogfish bite has been crazy. Oh, it, yeah, the hogfish is great Stupid. right now. Yeah, like the, we might not kill the gray snappers on a half day, even if it's been rough or something. You know, whatever happens, but we caught a few hogfish that day. You know. Yeah, I mean. You've been working some of these five-hour trips, especially since we haven't had some 39 hours, and it seems like almost every five-hour, uh, three, four, five, six, ten hogfish. It's and crazy. shorts. We're throwing back a lot of short ones, you know. Yeah. There's lots of hogfish out there right now. They like that cooler weather and... Biting like crazy. They're, they're there, yeah. yeah. Today, today, they may have had a 100 or 120 gray snappers, but they had several hogfish in there with yeah. them. Yeah, and some big hogfish, and too. And big ones. They, they were this, like that. Or this this woman in the photo here, she caught two keeper hogfish on today's half-day mm-hmm. trip. Yeah, her uh, yeah, her friend and uh, the dude she was with was taking photos of the string. I was like, hey, man, nice fish. He was like, oh, yeah, I appreciate it. Thanks. And she comes running up. Oh, those aren't his fish. Those are mine. <laughs> yeah. She caught two of them in a row. <laughs> so they were definitely biting well on the half day today. The 10-hour trip today, they caught a bunch of hogfish as well. A really good bite of the hogfish. Plus, these are my two favorite grouper that we catch consistently. Definitely, hands down, best eaten grouper in my opinion. Mm-hmm. A speckled you agree? and a spotted. A speckled. <laughs> Scientific names, huh? <laughs> yeah. A speckled and a spot. Which one's speckled and which one's spotted? <laughs> yeah, that tough is tough guy. to tell. <laughs> so, uh, in all seriousness, this one over here on the right is a scamp grouper. This one over here is commonly conf- uh, commonly called a strawberry grouper. That one's a red hind, though, uh, right? A uh, grazeby. Grazeby, grazeby. A red hind is different. Yeah, a the little, red... very mild difference. Yeah, the red hind is more of a yellow background and bigger red dots, right? Yeah. yeah. We've been I always get those confused. But yeah, those are two very, very good eating grouper right but there. But that's right a monster grazeby. Yeah, that's a bit. He's as big as that scamp is. Yeah, that grazeby, they don't get much bigger than that. You can catch a grazeby maybe 12, 14 inches. Yeah, 12 inches and you got a big one. That's a monster. Oh, yeah. Scamp, they got to be 16 inches to keep, so he probably was a throwback scamp. Uh, but the smaller scamp are very, very tasty. One of my favorite eating fish for sure. But the these strawberry grouper, strawberry grouper would be a grazeby, a red hind, a rock hind, rock hind, speckled hind. Nope, that's that's, that's a, a whole different yeah, that's a that's whole cutie. different one. They're they're unique like that. They are, yeah. Red hind, rock hind. Uh, Graysby, strawberry grouper. That's all it. three of those fish, three different species, all three commonly called strawberry grouper. And they're all really good. And, yeah. And one of the other ones I found is similar. A lionfish is very similar to those groupers. Lionfish are stellar eating fish. Mm, excellent. Excellent. Got to be careful trying to keep them and fillet them, but they are incredible food mm, quality. Mm-hmm. I'll never forget going over to your house and ah. you had that lionfish... You had it whole, or did you No, no, it? I filleted it and stacked one fillet on top of the other. Whoo! This guy can cook. I mean, he is the skinny dude. No, we had crab in between, though. We oh, had, yeah. I was going to say, yeah. I didn't forget the crab, Lionfish, dog. stone crab, lionfish, and then baked it. He forgot the cheese, too. He <laughs> put cheese in that, too. <laughs> and garlic. And garlic. Lots of garlic. It was incredible. So, definitely lionfish are really good eating fish, too. It's funny because everybody makes fun of me and Frank because when Frank's on the show, it always goes back to food. So maybe <laughs> it's go. maybe it's just me. <laughs> <laughs> 
Nice hogfish. This is from today's 10 hour trip. That Definitely. Is, yeah. He came out uh, and he got 10 dozen shrimp. He wanted to target some hogs. So I'm glad to see her. He got a nice big one. Uh, Estelle Wolfman, she just joined our regulars club and she murdered it today on the 10 hour. She got this big mangrove. She got two keeper hogs. She oh, got yeah. a nice keeper red grouper. Oh, that's all. Yeah, Estelle put on a clinic today on the 10 hour trip after joining the regulars club. So pretty cool. Definitely some uh, great action. I mean, this 10-hour all-day box is just spectacular. Cat and Bobby put it on the fish. A lot of those fish are still under the ice. You can see over here there's some red underneath the ice. So some good hogfish catch. I think uh, Mikey said they had just over 20 keeper hogs. That's great. Yeah, it's great. incredible, man. And then they got some mangroves. The last stop, they got some lanes. So you don't see the lanes in the photo there, but uh, definitely some good eating fish. Some porgies. Red grouper bite was a little tough. They didn't get any keeper red grouper. Uh, that one was a little short. Estelle's fish, so I but was mistaken red, but, earlier. But a hogfish is better than a keeper red grouper in my book. Anyway, I would really. trade four red <laughs> grouper for one hog for a for a barely legal hogfish. Yeah, trade just four enough for big dinner. red grouper. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, those hogfish are much better and much better quality than red grouper, but they come, you know, it is what it is. You, sometimes the red groupers are biting, sometimes the hogs are biting, and sometimes it's fishing. Yeah, sometimes you don't catch nothing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but here's some more of those hogfish. Definitely a great time, and this one Joe was a, a heartbreaker. Uh, Mr. Joe May, all the way from Orlando, came out. Caught himself a nice big old fish. Probably, I would have thought it was a monster hogfish, you know. Oh, yeah, You're that out was there. a fighter. Yeah, gags, uh, or hogfish bite, or uh, fight really heavy. Mm. That was one of the most surprising things to me in the last, like, five years, ten years, when we really got into this hogfishing thing. You hook one of those hogfish on light tackle. It's like fighting a big gag on heavy tackle, you know? Yeah, they run a few times. Oh, yeah, and, and they'll rock you up. Yeah, I got rocked up by a hog. I caught a hogfish one time, and it had it already broke a guy off, and it had rocked me up, too. Yeah. But yeah. I got it out of the rocks. Because a lot of times with hogfish, we're using lighter tackle. Mm -hmm. With gags, we're using 80, 100-pound leader, big six-aught reels. So when you hook an, a big 12, 14, 15, 20-pound gag, it fights you hard even on that heavy tackle. When we're fishing for hogfish, we're using... 30 pound test and a spinning reel so when you hook that big hogfish even if it's only 14 16 20 24 inches it fights you like one a of those 16 inch one is gonna fight you hard he, he he's might tall. rock you up he's that tall you know yeah, yeah. he's they, they act kind of like uh what i've been told halibut do they kind of use their tall their height of that fish against you they kind of turn sideways in the water so that hydrodynamic drag is kind of working against you kind of like reeling up a uh uh if What's I that thing say, you put I on the windows? Compare, oh, yeah. <laughs> the, if I, I would say trigger fish almost. They yeah. almost fight they fight harder but similar to a big trigger fish. Yeah. They use that height, so basically uh plywood is the word I was looking there for. Oh, that's <laughs> what we put on the windows from the hurricane. So. <laughs> yeah, welcome to Florida. <laughs> so it's kinda like reeling in a big old board of plywood because they're kinda turning and turning sideways and creating that drag. So it's definitely a a, a good fighting fish, especially the first 20 40 feet because they're trying to get you into the bottom yeah it's nuts man but uh long story short joe may big heartbreaker here with that gag grouper on today's 10 hour trip uh gags are closed unfortunately so it was a catch and release this is mikey's son christian uh great kid and hard worker there's no such thing as child labor laws offshore <laughs> those aren't tears <laughs> those, are, those are tears of joy <laughs> no i'm just kidding this is mikey's son and they posed it for a photo but he was helping scrub the boat quite a bit christian's a hard worker for sure and i don't know how this photo got in there that's good it's yeah. a great picture whatever it is <laughs> we do also do island trips in shelling and i uh, used to be a hand model <laughs> <laughs> that is not will's hand <laughs> Uh, but we do do shelling trips, and apparently one of the shelling photos got mixed in there. Sea bass. Sea bass is back with a vengeance, catching lots of these hogfish on the 10-hour trip. These boys had fun today. Yeah, they did. They look like they enjoy their jobs. Oh, yeah, they had a good half day today. <laughs> yes, sir. Those Great times. <laughs> nice catch of hogfish. These are from the five-hour half day. 
Uh, just a crazy good bite of hogfish right now. Look at that photo. That That's a nice they, one. Those hogfish are great picture fish. Yeah, man. Great eating fish. They take great photos. They look great in the fish box. They're elusive. They look even better on the plate. Yeah, they do. Now, this guy right here, this is a story. So, this guy was spit up by a Graysby, uh, a strawberry grouper, better known as a strawberry grouper. So, the strawberry grouper hit the deck on the 10-hour all day, spit this guy out. So, this is a little tropical fish. I don't know. Will and I were talking about the name. I don't know. We Some were, of you guys know it. We don't know it. Yeah, we were trying to argue over the name. Long story <laughs> we short, call it a damsel. We, don't... we call it a damsel, but we know we're not right about that. <laughs> <laughs> damsel fish. We're going to start there, but yeah. probably not right. It was a damsel in distress when it hit the deck. <laughs> so it got spit out by a uh, strawberry grouper. Mike Lee, our first mate on the 10-hour trip today, took it, put it in a squid cup with some salt water, and took two and a half hours. Well, he wasn't working on it the whole time, but he, uh, he was working the deck, kept checking on it. Two and a half hours later, he used a, or uh, throughout that two and a half hours, was using a small number one hook to try to vent that fish and eventually got it swimming strong in that cup. And uh, it was let go, was the story I was told. So, little tiny baby fish spit up by a big, big, big fish, and it was able to be saved and safely released. So, I mean, we killed a bunch of fish on the 10-hour trip, but we saved one. And then the remora that ate that fish, you know, <laughs> he felt really good afterwards. <laughs> So you're saying it got released and then got eaten on the way down? Is that is that how you're gonna tell that story? It's like the I would bird. love to hear you tell stories to your your baby infant daughter. Is that how you tell stories? And the princess was in the castle and then she fell. She did and was eaten by the bad wolf. Before the show started, you were telling me about how your daughter thinks that your cat was eaten by a coyote. Yeah, she our, my her cat has disappeared. And one of the options and is you eaten told by her a coyote. <laughs> oh my gosh. So I said I would say hi to Madison tonight. Hi, Madison. So hi, Madison. Baby Meow got eaten by a coyote. No, he's too fast for that, Madison. You know that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh, Kara's going to be so mad at me. <laughs> All right, let's get into giving away a free trip. I think it's time. Oh, yeah. Someone's th someone's going to win a free five-hour half day for two people right now. If if I can figure out how to use this new giveaway thing. They changed it on me. Uh -oh. Every time I figure it out, they want to change it on me. But I think we got it figured out here. So someone's going to win a five-hour half day for two people Coming up right now, five hour half day for two. We're gonna give away the 10 hour all day for two after that shortly, and then the 39 hour free trip a little later on. But Bev Van Nort, uh, that is your five hour half day for two. Watching from Indiana, burr, extra chilly up there in Indiana, I assume. Not so much fun living in the great white north. In my opinion, I was talking to a guy today. He was looking into doing a 39 hour fishing trip with his doc, with his uh, sons. Van, van. Oh, can I, I, put, I misspelled. Bev. I apologize. There we go. <laughs> we got the notes right. Oh, right. no, oh, okay, okay. You got it. You got it. Chill out. All right. <laughs> I don't know how to spell. We don't need to tell the world this. Uh, so I was talking to this guy today, looking to do a 39 hour trip with his sons. He was talking to me about the 39-hour trip, and then we get to talking about other things. He tells me that they are scuba dive, ice scuba diving. I was like, wait, what? That's different. Yeah, going under the ice with scuba diving equipment. I don't like scuba diving here when the water is below 75 degrees, let alone getting cutting a hole in the ice <laughs> and, and hopping in. in. That sounds terrible. And when the fish is just going so slow. When he yeah. Goes <laughs> the fish isn't even like swimming. It's just, you just cruising. Grab him. You yeah. grab him and stick him up through the hole. Yeah. <laughs> you don't even have to shoot him at that point. <laughs> it's crazy, though. I couldn't believe that. And uh, they were really into it. And he, he also talked about uh, scuba diving in the Mississippi River and silt lakes 
uh, searching the bottom with no visibility. Like, you can't even see your nose. Looking for fossils and stuff. Oh, yeah. That's right up your alley, dude. I don't like where I can't see, though. Yeah. Yeah, because we're used to saltwater and sharks. But, yeah. I mean, you're not going to have to deal with sharks or alligators. Yeah, in if you're Michigan. totally safe in a lake with turtles, yeah. you know. <laughs> what is a turtle going to do to you? <laughs> I've got a fear. <laughs> You've got an irrational fear of turtles? Yeah, I mean, my pinky is... <laughs> <laughs> you, that's a whole nother story, Yeah, huh? we won't talk about the pinky. Oh, <laughs> uh, let's get back into these photos before we get off track too far. All right, so we talked about the near shore. We talked about offshore. Uh, Want to get into these 30, or uh, these best of photos. First things first, this guy right here. Uh, triggerfish. Speaking of good eating fish, this is one of my favorites. What about season on triggerfish? March 1st, baby. All right. They're coming up. March 1st, these triggerfish will open. Triggerfish last year were open March 1st through uh, May 7th. Uh, this year, I would imagine, uh, definitely going to open March 1st. I would imagine they'll probably be open about that same amount of time. And big. Huge. Big, big triggerfish. This time or uh, that time of year for sure. Uh, March uh, for sure is a great time to get them, but uh, March, April, and it, even into May. But unfortunately, they close when them. they're open. We're gonna catch, be catching them. Yeah. All right. So let's see here. The big mangrove well, snapper. We're getting after those mangroves, dude. The, yeah, we're going. We're going deep. Um, so let's talk about the thirty-nine hour trips. We've got a thirty-nine hour trip Tuesday. We've got another thirty-nine hour trip January twenty-first or January twenty-fourth, and then our third thirty-nine hour this month is the thirty-first. So what's kind of the plan this time of year? Uh, my guess, I have. I've talked to Captain Garrett, but I haven't talked to him about fishing. And <laughs> you, this is a time of year. <laughs> This is where you go deep this time of year. There's a there's the big porgies out there. There's big vermilions. There's red groupers. Big mangroves. Monster mangroves and, like this guy. Uh, yeah, and you're not worried about targeting gags in the middle grounds anymore because they that's our we can't keep the gags anymore. You know. Yeah. So we're gonna be fishing deep water, fishing heads and tails, and uh, this is a good time of year to fish meat fishing. You know, fish with a chicken rig sometimes. And I'm going out Tuesday on this 39-hour trip, and this time of year with gags being closed, uh, I went out at the end of December with my dad for his birthday. This Tuesday, I'm going out for my birthday. It's not till the 24th, but I, I'm celebrating early since I got to go to the National Marine Fisheries meeting. But long story short, what I'm getting after is at the end of December when gags were open, we were gearing up with 60-pound, 80-pound leaders. Yeah, now it's time to not care about gags and go light tackle. 30-pound, 40-pound. Yeah. We're going to start really, really light, and uh, I'm going to use smaller hooks. So probably going to be starting with like 40-pound and 6-aught hooks, and I'm going to have some 30-pound leaders with 5-aught hooks tied behind me. And I'm going to have some 60-pound leaders with like a 7 aught in case we get into some red groupers and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, basically I have a rod on stand. I have a light snapper rod this time of year, 30 or 40-pound test. And then you have a like red grouper rod on standby with 60, 80-pound leader on there. And yeah. really the red groupers don't care, so 80-pound leader, you know. And uh, But fish light for the snappers. And if you get busted off fishing for the snappers, you grab that bigger one if you think it was a red grouper. If it, you there's a lot of gags around right now, so the gags will be there too. And, yeah, you know, the, that's the unfortunate part is sometimes fishing light this time of year, you get busted off by that big fish, and you're like, what was that? I got to yeah, catch right. it. I got to <laughs> catch it. But then it turns out to be a big gag, and you get a good photo and have to release it. And but, this is a time of year on the 39 hour at least where you there is a Cabrera snapper out there this time of year. Ooh, mm. That is fun. Uh, we've caught some big Kuberas. Last year was 106 or 111 pounds. Huh? Yeah, 111 pounder. I called a 38 pound one. The last December, not this December, December before that. You're gonna make me buy lobster again for mm. bait. <laughs> <laughs> but there's one out there, and we fish that area this time of year, the deeper water where yeah. the Kuberas are. And uh, so you got a shot at a big mutton, mangrove, big yellowtail. Mm. I pulled up the photos from last January. So this is the the highlight reel from January 2019. So let's see what we were catching last 
year at this time. Of it's course, that time, yeah. And we got a calm fish. week. We got a calm week. It's time for that. Look at that one. That was the uh, yellowtail red snapper hybrid we caught last January. That guy does look funny, doesn't he? <laughs> Who, Brian or the fish? <laughs> Uh, some fat red grouper. That's from a 39 hour trip in January. That's a 10 hour all day mangrove. Big, big, big mangrove from a 39 hour. There he is. That's a catch and release gag. Handsome guy right there. Yeah, he's all right. <laughs> <laughs> some big gags come up. Unfortunately, look at the head on that mangrove. And look at the fish box. Yeah, just stacked, cool. stacked with mangrove snapper and yellowtail. And we haven't been there in a long time, guys. And that's hand, where we're going. My hand is it, is shaking. I can't wait for Tuesday, man. Yeah, that we haven't been there in a while, and that's where we're headed. African pompano, deep water African pompano are definitely a bycatch when we're mangrove fishing. Look at that stringer, dude. Young guy, big red grouper, vermilions, almacos. Yellow tails, fat mangroves. That's like an 80s stringer right there, you know. <laughs> 80s stringer. <laughs> then we got Richie. How'd this get in there? <laughs> he, he got a little tired that trip. You know? He was all tuckered out. Big mangroves. That, back it up one time. That was that one. Yeah, that's, that's the hybrid. That's him right there. I caught one of those too. I, I want to get it mounted, but I haven't done it yet. I've got all the pictures and measurements Oh, I was about it. to say, you still have the fish? No, I've got the pictures and measurements for it. That's all you need is picture and measurement. A yellow mouth grouper. The yellow mouth. That is not a scamp. That is a yellow mouth. This time of year when we're fishing deeper, closer to like 260 to 300 foot of water, we're catching big mangroves, fat red grouper, nice scamp, and occasionally these unique species. Mm-hmm. I mean, that was uh, one, I think we got one yellow mouth pretty much all year. Can you yeah, think of another they one? They come and they like other years we've caught ten or fifteen of them, but they, mm-hmm. yeah, they're an, they're an odd fish. Definitely an odd fish. Great eating fish. Mm-hmm. Kind of a mix between the scamp and the um, the scamp and the gag, I guess. Yeah, they're they're very similar to a scamp, if I had to say. There's Will giving a seminar. Another red grouper, big mangroves. Look at that thing. That's a hoss. You can tell that's January, too. There's no denying that. It's gold. Nice big scamp and red grouper. Small red grouper, but big scamp. And you can see how deep we're fishing. Look at the eyeballs on that sucker. Oh, yeah, you know that. Deep water fishing. I don't know how all these random photos got in here. I'm going to stop because I'm not... <laughs> There's <laughs> a lot of photos. Yeah, I don't remember some of these photos. <laughs> oh, here we go. <laughs> We're back in it. All right. So the trigger fish, we do see some big trigger fish out there in the deep water that we have to catch and release. Uh, big fat red groupers. Smokey having a great time on the half days. Big John. Look at that thing. He had him a scamp and a lollipop. <laughs> A scamp and a sucker. <laughs> that is a monster scamp, though. That is like a 10-plus pound scamp. That right is there. that is what you write home. If I caught that scamp grouper, I'd put my rod down, crack a beer, and my trip's over. Yeah, I've only caught one like that, probably, in my history at Hubbard's. I've caught one scamp that was uh, like maybe 9, 10 pounds. Yeah, I've caught, I've caught one caught similar one. to that in yeah. my time. That is a monster, That's dude. a nice, nice fish right there. That's a mounter for sure. That's one you get rubbing, a rubbing of for mm-hmm. sure. And we're back to the hybrids. Here so, we go again. <laughs> <laughs> that was the 39, or that was kind of our January 2019 photos. So that's kind of what we're looking forward to this month. And that's kind of what we're already seeing on the half day trips. Lots of hogfish, some nice mangroves, some red grouper sprinkled in. And this Tuesday, we're getting back after them on that 39-hour trip. And those fish run through there this time of year on the 39-hour. They run through in January, early January. They go they go through there. So hopefully we haven't been out there. And uh, we're hopefully going to get out there and hit them in the 150-foot, 160-foot range. So one person asks, are going to the elbow question mark? Well, we try to fish general areas, and uh, we try to kind of stay away from the heavily hit areas. Uh, we fish in and around the middle grounds, especially when gags were open towards the end of gag grouper season, kind of around the edges, less known areas. This time of year, we're definitely fishing closer to the elbow in those deeper areas. Uh, so going to be a chance to hit the elbow, but most of the time, 
uh, in and all around it, but just outside. Of yeah, it. If, I mean, if it's right, the elbow's good, but a lot of times it's fished down, and we got a couple areas around it. And that this will week, fish. this week, for example, I highly doubt we would be near the elbow on that thirty-nine hour trip. If I was around the boat, I I would not plan a trip to the elbow. And I guarantee Brian's been doing this a super long time. He, or Garrett, I think is right. Oh, this Garrett's one. Garrett's. I would be a little Tuesday. north of the elbow, and then we'll fish some <laughs> deeper water around a little fish deeper water outside of the elbow and the reason i say i wouldn't plan a trip to the elbow this week is because the weather's going to be so nice when the weather's calm everybody and their brother is out there in their bay boats and their yellow fins and their contenders uh and they're screaming out there and we're gonna see a lot of boats yeah so luckily we're going during the week though <laughs> so yeah we'll probably fish outside of the elbow especially in the daytime yeah if for i had sure. to guess but I don't want to give away any secrets. I could be totally wrong about this, too. You never know. Yeah, and that's the prerogative. We we go where the fish are. We don't fish certain specific areas. We follow the fish, and we go to where the fish are biting best. And that's the benefit of having so many boats is mm -hmm. our captains can communicate amongst each other, and we can stay on top of these guys. So we're excited to go after these mangrove snapper. Uh, Chris asked, what kind of gear am I going to need for the first week in March on the 12 hour extreme? Go normally go on the 12 hour extreme during June. Well, first week in March is similar to what Will and I have been talking about lighter tackle. I mean, generally 40 pound leader, uh, six odd hook double snelled. I would take for the mangroves on a high gear ratio or two speed conventional reel. And then uh, a second reel with probably maybe 60, 80 pound leader at the big seven out hook. What yeah, about you? Your, your mangrove light for the mangroves, lanes, porgies, vermilion, and then the red groupers are good in the under 20 foot. And a lot of times they close the red grouper in March in over 120 feet. But yeah. The red groupers have been good in the 120 foot range and inside that line. So. You'll be red grouper fishing and uh, mangrove and lane. Trigger fishing. Trigger fish trigger on your fish lighter setup. Yep. Yep. Uh, another question. How much lead should I bring for the 39-hour Tuesday? That one's all you, Wilbo. All right. Lead's on the 39-hour Tuesday. If you're fishing a 40-pound setup, four, you can get away with a 4-ounce weight. Just try a 4-ounce weight. If the current, if there's current moving, we haven't fished this area in a while. We don't know if the current's going to be there. You want to bring extra you big lead, though. You need sixes and eights. Mm -hmm. You need sixes and eights, but you might be able to get away with a four ounce weight. Yeah. And free lining wise, if you're fishing on the stern, there could be tunas, yellowtails, and mangroves and stuff like that up in the water. So you can fish real lightweight on the back of the boat, almost free line, yeah. one ounce, half ounce, stuff like that. Yeah, I mean, typically I would probably this Tuesday, I'm going to start out with uh, four to six ounce leads, depending on my main line size. Uh, typically you take your main line, you drop to zero. So if you've got 40 pound main line, you're using a four ounce lead, 60, 80 pound main line, six to eight ounce lead, hundred pound main line, hundred pound lead braid kind of makes that lead on uh, 10 ounce <laughs> lead drop to zero, but yeah, uh, uh, braid makes it tricky though. A six ounce start with a six ounce. If the current's straight up and down, go to four ounce. If the current's smoking, go heavier, but I like to just six is a good starting spot. Yeah. I would start with the six and then work your way down if you don't need it. Uh, especially with those lighter rods, it makes it a little easier to feel the bite when you got a lighter lead. So I like using the lightest lead possible while still getting that to the bottom it. quickly. And if you're using braid with a top shot, you can definitely get away with the lighter lead. Yeah. Uh, six ounce, good place to start in that deeper water and then dropping down if you can or getting heavier if you need to. That's... That's one of those risks we run fishing deeper water this time of year is sometimes you can get out there and that current can be smoking and then that makes it a little tougher for sure. Yeah, I, sometimes I start with an 8 ounce even, some, mm -hmm. you know, just to know that you're going to get so down there. So to answer there your question, then, we have no idea what yeah, to start with. Yeah, 4 to 8. <laughs> don't yeah. bring 1 pound leads. I don't think you'll need those. Yeah, just bring a little bit of everything and be prepared to quickly switch and uh, you got to stay fluid. And even throughout the course of a trip, you can get out there on a 39 hour and start fishing and everything can be working fine. And then all of a sudden the current can change or the wind can shift and you got to totally change the way your, your approach and your, the way you're fishing. Yeah. 
I yeah, mean, though, they, how often do you see that during the trip? That could quite possibly happen this trip. That's a, probably a 50% chance that you'll have almost calm current for sometimes and then current where you need lead or you're going to be getting tangled up with a guy next to you and need mm-hmm. a 6 or 8 or 10 ounce lead sometimes. Never know. No. All right, so it's time to give away a 39-hour fishing trip. We did it. Or a 10-hour oh, fishing gee, trip. Oh, gee, I thought we did I, it. I changed it. I changed it. I'm sorry. I misspoke. No 39. We gave away a 5-hour half day for two. We're going to give away a 10-hour for two. Then we're going to give away a 39-hour trip. So 10-hour trip for two. Let me make that clear. 10-hour trip for two. Hey, Green Bay's winning? Green Bay is winning. 28-24. Don't bring up football. <laughs> You're going to confuse people and make them change the channel. All right. So uh, we're going to give away a 10-hour all day for two people coming up now. He had 12 ounces could hit bottom, but we'll get back to that a little bit. Yeah, we're going to get back to the weight discussion. Uh, 10-hour trip for two goes to Barbara Austin from Kansas. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Two ladies in a row. Probably going to be a gentleman for the 39-hour this, this time around. It is a totally random draw, guys, so we cannot control. Sometimes people complain when it's all women or all guys. It's totally random. That is the best part about this is you just never know. And you do have to be watching live in order to win because when you're picked as one of these lucky winners, you have to text message our page in order to claim your free trip. So you text us at our main office number. That's 727 727- Three nine three one nine four seven. That is our main office number, uh, and that's where you text us to claim your free trip. Uh, so for the people who are asking, Dusty just texted me too. <laughs> Dusty just texted you. He was updating you. Yeah. Seattle is losing to the Packers. My wife's a big Packers fan. Uh, nine minutes left. We better hurry this up because I kind of want to see the end of this. All right, so we are getting close to the end for sure. Uh, so we talked about inshore, we talked about near shore, we worked our way offshore, and uh, I mean, we're going fishing this week. We're going yeah, fishing we are. Tuesday, and uh, a area we haven't been to in a while, and we could. Last year, you can't keep a lot of fish this time of year, January, February, March. But last year, our best trip all around per guy was in January. Yeah. Yeah, that I think it was a 44-hour, yeah, right? Yeah, that January 44-hour, we call our limit of snap, big snapper. Yeah. And we had to cancel the 44-hour last weekend, and we were headed back to that same area, and but we've got a great Tuesday. weather stretch on Tuesday. Yeah, so it's going to be a very similar weather to last year's 44 and uh, the same Very time of year. Very similar moon forecast, yeah. too. So, uh, it, things might go right. You never know. And uh, we still got another light load on the 39-hour trip January 24th. We've got a light load, even lighter load, on January 31st. So, the Friday trips, January 24th and January 31st, are even more light than this coming Tuesday. This coming Tuesday, we've got 27 January 24th, we've only got 20, and then January 31st, I think we've only got about 18, so tons of room on the trips for sure, great opportunity to get out there and take advantage of the great opportunity to fish deep water and uh, get after those big mangroves, Uh, but yeah, we get them this trip, which I'm pretty sure we're going to, then it's going to be a good January this year. Great January. Yeah, good start to the year. And uh, we want to remind you guys, we're running those Wednesday and Sunday 12-hour extremes. Uh, Want to remind everybody, again, we have this live show every Sunday night. So we'll see you next week for another live stream show. Uh, don't forget, January 26th, we have that National Marine Fisheries meeting. So we won't be doing the live stream show that Sunday. But every other Sunday we will be. Uh, January 18th, that's this Saturday, we're going to be at Bass Pro Shops. You're coming with me, right? Oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> no hesitation. <laughs> I love it. Uh, this Saturday... I'll be at uh, Top Golf right next door. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Save me a picture. Yeah. <laughs> uh, January 18th, 2 p.m., we're going to have that Bass Pro Shop seminar. And uh, don't miss out on that for sure. Love to have you come out there and uh, join us at Bass Pro Shops. But... 
I think it's time to give away a free trip, and uh, I'm going to catch the end of that Packers game. And uh, then you got to go blow some slips out, huh? Yeah, I'm headed to work after this, D. <laughs> yeah, head to work after this. Don't worry, not to take customers Uber, I'm short. Ubering to work. Actually. Ubering to work to work on the dock, folks. <laughs> yeah, we're I'm not, not getting on We're the not no driving mechanical, boats. <laughs> no mechanical activity. <laughs> we are going to be tied up at the dock. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> I've All had right. enough sweet tea for the evening. Yes, some light-colored sweet tea. All right, so it is time to give away that free 39-hour fishing trip to one person. Don't forget, guys, if you are chosen as the lucky winner, you do have to claim that uh, on our uh, text line. That's 727-393-1947. Claim that live show or that live Jeez, claim that I, free trip yes. from the live show by texting us your home address uh, to that text uh, message phone number, 727-393-1947. What was that number, Wilbo? I've known that number for the last 18 years, uh, 727-393-1947. That's the number you used to call to, uh, to talk to your uh, then-girlfriend. Yeah, and now, then my, my girlfriend before that one, too, you know? <laughs> So, Will, you met your wife at Hubbard's yeah. Marina, right? Yeah, I met my girlfriend there, too. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. Uh, are, I'm kidding. Yes, you were sleeping I, I on the couch my, tonight. <laughs> yeah, I, I met my wife at Hubbard's, yes. Yes, crazy, <laughs> crazy for sure. All right, so let's give away a free 39-hour trip before you get yourself in more trouble there, Wilbo. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> All right. Dude, this new page is kind of cool, man. Oh, yeah, I'm liking it so far. Yeah. All right, so free 39-hour trip for two guests. Right now, we are at a 350 plus 20, so 370. Uh, 570 live viewers between Facebook and YouTube. That is crazy. 570 people, man. That's a good... Shattering records. Nice. So, who's going to win a free 39-hour trip out of you guys watching you guys and gals? Oh Christina! My. Christina Beavers <laughs> from Oldsmar. Holy moly, it was all women tonight. That is wild for sure. Todd, there's Todd on there. What's yeah. up, Todd? What's up, Todd Taylor? It was his birthday, January 10th. Happy belated birthday, Jim. Todd. He got him a gag. He waited all year to catch a gag, and he caught it at the <laughs> last trip of the year. There you go. <laughs> well, I appreciate you guys tuning in tonight. We'll see you next Sunday for plenty more fishing conversation, answering your questions. I didn't get to a lot of your questions tonight, but I will go back through the comments and answer them before we head uh, out of here tonight and uh, definitely by tomorrow for sure i need another glass mine i know d killed his i, I <laughs> nursed mine uh so i'm gonna get a refill and get through your comments and answer those questions don't forget to tune us tune in again next week for another sunday night live stream show join me this saturday at bass pro shops and uh come fishing with me and will this tuesday on the 39 hour trip me will and my older cousin Garrett, and uh, hopefully you're going to be putting on a clinic. Oh, yeah. It should be good. <laughs> this last 39 hour didn't work out so No, high. no. He's got some making up to do. <laughs> got a lot of making up to do. <laughs> he, so he gets to keep 40 mangroves on this next trip, right? <laughs> well, uh, 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 whatchamacallit, uh, Gasparilla's this Saturday. So, oh, yeah. Or Gasparilla's coming up, so hopefully... Uh, Everybody will be in shore busy with that, you know. A they won't worry about Dylan's 40 mangroves. <laughs> <laughs> I will never get a fisheries violation. I got to I gotta run for the golf council one of these days. I can't get a fisheries but I will only have 20 mangroves. And snapping. that's why I don't let you guys keep 12-inch mangroves because Dylan will kill me if we came home with a short mangrove kill. snapper. <laughs> kill. Use for bait. Will would be... <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks yeah. for tuning in. Happy Sunday night. We'll see you next week. Don't forget, if you're too busy to go fishing, you're just too darn busy. Mm -hmm. Don't forget to check uh, Captain Dylan Hubbard out on Instagram. I have that new page rolling, giving away a lot of fishing tips on my story. And then don't forget to check out Hubbard's Marine on Snapchat. That's new. Follow us on Snapchat, guys. Have a good night. Thanks for tuning in.